Salam sejahtera dan terima kasih kesudian rakan-rakan hadir khususnya saudara Rusaleh um, kerana Maybank jadi standard yang tinggi sikit lah. Dan uh, rakan-rakan menteri dan rakan-rakan yang hadir um, saya nak hanya jelaskan bahawa forum ilmuwan ini satu usaha atau ikhtiar menggalakkan wacana ilmu yang segar um, mengundang dari dunia ilmuwan uh, pemain peranan uh, korporat dan juga wakil pemerintah untuk um, mendengar dan mendapat hujah balasan, teguran atau kritikan dalam cara yang sangat terbuka dan santai. Bagi saya, mengangkat martabat memperkasa atau disebut madani dalam arti kata pemerkasaan ekonomi budaya itu mesti serag, selari dengan kesanggupan mengangkat juga keupayaan dari segut ilmu. Sebab itu kita anjurkan forum ilmuwan dalam pelbagai tajuk. Hmm, saya hadir tiga daripada empat. Oh. Yani, eh, t- eh, dua daripada tiga, ini yang keempat. Dan saya ucap terima kasih khususnya kepada Surah Zamri dan KPT yang bantu menyelaraskan tanpa elaun tambahan. Hmm. Baik. Dia, um, no. I don't know, should we proceed in English for the benefit of some others? It's your problem, not understanding Malay, not my problem. <laughs> anyway, um, this is quite um, a unique feat in this country, where the leadership uh, wants to encourage an open reason discourse, what we call um, the intellectual forum, to encourage uh, a healthy, frank exchange of views representing the corporate sector, the academia, and the one representative from the government. And the exchanges should be very informal, relaxed, and to make sure that you toe the line. I happen to chair this. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, just, because I think uh, I need to just uh, set an example to encourage this is a healthy tradition. This country can move forward. And I think one, what, what is, uh, to me, um, a deficit is uh, a healthy uh, reason, intellectual discourse. Uh, we can't assume that we have all the answers, and therefore, we need to listen. And um, we need to respond if necessary. But um, we need to turn out new ideas where a country can only grow and, and advance and the entire process of empowerment require what we mean is a channeling of guiding ideas. And uh, in the post-normal times, as we um, often um, times reiterate, is that um, it's so challenging, it's unprecedented, it's um, a process that happening all um, one time, all the issues, all the critical issues, where we call simultaneity, everything is simultaneous. And uh, we need new ideas. Who has all the answers about the energy transition, for example, or digital transformation? And here, for example, uh, a, a conventional bank, how to deal with, with um, cryptocurrency, for example, and um, or Bitcoin, because a traditional conventional view would just say no, discard. Uh, most central banks here, and even the European Union, have just rejected or outright for decades. But is it uh, an issue that we have to address? Can we um, make use of it or? engage in, 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 in a manner that they can be incorporated or should be reject. These are issues that no government should have the monopoly 
to, be, to, to, to assume that we understand or even have an, uh, to, to grapple with it and deal with it. Uh, similarly, the whole issue about um, not only commercial banks, but now the GLCs we are talking about, and also GLICs for that matter. Um, do we need to continue at this pace? Uh, do you need to assume, therefore, that all these agencies set up in the 70s, 80s, 90s are all relevant? Or do we need to merge? Do we need to uh, probably uh, disband them? And these are issues that uh, would um, be useful. You can have a useful open exchange because uh, uh, political leaders, political leaders will have their own limitations. Uh, because many of these agencies are uh, chaired by warlords. I don't know about Maybank. No, <laughs> no, no, not Maybank, with the exception. Uh, and, and bureaucrats have their own setup. I mean, I must thank the Secretary General, uh, the Chief Secretary, because he represents uh, a different view to say that, look, we are here not just to uh, behave like uh, a, uh, a chief clerk. You are here as secretary generals, as director generals, as chief secretary. You are supposed to turn out ideas uh, to understand our limitations, our failures, and the need to affect change and reform. Which means you must have that intellectual capacity not only to have a good grasp of the issues at hand, uh, and to ensure that Malaysia remains uh, uh, competitive and comparative advantage to other countries. We tend to, for example, uh, uh, Zafru is aware when we uh, he some, some reports to show how good we are in 23, or we were 23 as compared to 20 and 1990. But I say fair. Why can't you then compare with our neighboring countries or the most successful countries? We can establish great success if you compare to Chad and Zimbabwe. But certainly that's not, I know, with, with, without, uh, I'm, I tend to forget that I'm Prime Minister, I should not mention countries. <laughs> mm, I apologize. But so, so these are, I think, the new approaches. We were with Zamri and the team today uh, about the need to affect change, reform in the higher education, a blueprint which is, um, I should say, um, an impressive presentation. But still, we need some very critical views to challenge accepted norm. I mentioned to them that even the United States, as far back as the 1980s, under Reagan, when he set up this uh, commission on higher education, and entitled, because there's a group of scholars who are quite critical of the system, but the failure of the system, the title of the report, the Commission on Higher Education, was A Nation at Risk. Can you imagine? The standard of education uh, in the United States, and still you have a report debunking the established uh, normative thinking that things seem to be all right, and the report it was entitled A Nation at Risk. Because declining of standards and the challenge from the new emerging economies, including China at that time and some other uh, countries. Uh, so when we, for example, introduce the report, do we want, therefore, to just say some minor adjustments are necessary? Or do we need to undertake some bold, radical measures? Only through bold and radical measures can we ascertain our level of success. That's my introductory lecture.